Hello, my name is Bev Suderman, and I'm a small town and rural planner based on Vancouver Island. I served on the jury for the Awards for Planning Excellence, and for the last year of my service, I was also the chair. As a former chair, I want to talk with you about the Awards for Planning Excellence program and explain some of the criteria about what make an excellent project. In other words, what made these projects stand out? What makes a project excellent? Along the way, I want to share some of my favorite submissions from my time on the Awards for Planning Excellence jury. The Awards for Planning Excellence started in 1983 to showcase and encourage excellence in Canadian planning. Since that time, the awards program has grown to include 13 award categories on important planning topics like climate change, healthy communities, inclusionary planning, city and regional planning, rural and small town planning, and more. The 13 categories reflect the diversity of contexts and challenges faced by Canadian planners at home and globally. They are meant to provide opportunities for planners to showcase their work and have it considered fairly. It wouldn't be fair to have a small town community character study, for example, be put into the same category as a major urban center placemaking project. The contexts are different, the resources available to be applied to the project are different, the challenges are different, and so we need to have multiple categories. You can find full details about the 13 categories on the CIP website. But what constitutes significant achievement in professional planning? Each year, a jury of planning professionals from across Canada from academic, public, and private sectors of the profession get together to evaluate the submissions and determine whether they are worthy of receiving an award of excellence or merit. The criteria for determining excellence includes innovation in planning. Is it doing something new or doing something familiar in a new way? Positive impact on the profession. Is it inspiring? Does it provide guidance? Is it helpful? Implementation potential. Is it realistic? Can it be implemented? Quality of content and presentation. Does the whole package hang together well? Communication. Have the nominators clearly communicated the project? Have they identified how the project is innovative? How the project will have a positive impact on the profession? How the project can be implemented? Sustainability. Does the project contribute to better quality of life, preservation or restoration of the environment or other means of making the world a better place? And lastly, public engagement. Were the public engaged effectively? How was this done? How was the public input integrated into the project results? The first question to answer is whether or not it meets the criteria for submission. There are three major criteria. Was it submitted by a CIP member? Has it been adopted or accepted by the local government or client group? And was it completed within the time frame? This video is being recorded in early 2021. The eligible period for submissions for the 2021 awards is from January 1, 2019 to December 31, 2020. In other words, the project must have been adopted or accepted by the local government or client group within this period of time. This means that projects actually have to be completed and not submitted in draft form for the awards. There are special rules as well for submission of statutory plans from Ontario because of the challenge period. If this situation applies to you, please check directly with CIP staff about how the challenge period applies. Some of the things that the jury looks for are the introduction of an original idea or refinement of a technique or procedure, the importance of the project's concepts to the profession, the transferability of these concepts to other planning projects. One year when I was on the jury, we got two or three virtually identical project nominations, all big cities, all waterfront, all with similar design solutions. It was very hard to see how any of these were innovative since they looked like they had emerged from the same playbook. 
innovation has to be something that is not standard practice in the planning profession for that particular situation. In looking at the methodology, the jury considers how the project was conceived. What were the methods used to design the project? How was it rolled out? How was the public engaged? Was there a new analytical tool used? How were the results presented? In other words, the jury is looking at every aspect of the methodology from the project's conception all the way through implementation and finalization. Did the project meet the goals and objectives laid out and clearly stated by the project? How effective was the project's implementation strategy and programming? I feel like I should offer a word here about implementation. It doesn't mean that the neighborhood, for example, was built. From the perspective of the jury, successful implementation means that the goals and objectives of the project were achieved, of the planning project were achieved. The jury evaluates a project's organization and clarity, including text, graphics, and completeness of research and recommendations. Will target audiences easily understand the content and the style of the project? It's important to note here that a typo on the cover page is not well received by the jury. It looks sloppy and careless. It's also important to note that you don't have to hire a graphic design firm to prepare your submission. The key point from the jury's perspective is that we can review your submission and understand how all of the different pieces fit together. Your project is competing for the jury's attention against up to 200 different submissions. The jury's time frame is very short to review all of these nominations, and there's a lot of material to review. So the clearer it is for the jury, the better your chances of receiving an award. One of the most interesting aspects of many of the submissions for me was the creativity around public engagement. The jury looks at the specific techniques used to share information and gather information from the public at various points during the project's development. What innovations did this project try as part of their public engagement? How did the community get involved beyond the usual suspects? There are so many fantastic examples of excellent public engagement and they require a lot of effort. Sustainability is a vague and amorphous term that is going out of fashion. However, it is included as a criteria because it's important. A key question is whether or not the project in the end contributes to quality of life with particular attention to environmental, economic, social, and cultural attributes of the plan and its capacity to support good governance over the long term. Does it contribute to a more equitable community? Does it protect or restore ecological function? Does it provide economic opportunities that support the life of the community? Does it respect culture, history, and heritage? Over my four-year term as an Awards for Planning Excellence jury member, I had the opportunity to review innovative and inspiring projects in Canada and internationally. I want to share with you some of the projects that stood out for me. The first one was the Ferry Docks project, and it was one of the most memorable winners for me because the designs and the process so carefully incorporated and reflected local character while at the same time meeting project specifications. The students and faculty competed against professional consulting firms to win the contract. They paid attention to the detail and project requirements and community in coming up with their designs, and the resulting presentation was brilliant. Not every successful award-winning project is like that, of course, but most will respond to a planning challenge in a way that is culturally and environmentally contextual. Some other great examples of this are the winter design guidelines for the City of Edmonton or the Mervish Village project in downtown Toronto. The City of Laval's city plan, I, I won't offend your ears by trying to pronounce it in French, um, was also excellent because of its comprehensive approach to land use planning, addressing many of today's major planning issues, such as climate change, food self-sufficiency, affordable housing, heritage protection, and infrastructure challenges, including transportation. One of the things that really struck me as a small town and rural planner 
is how frequently in small towns and rural areas the jurisdictions are different for roads versus land use planning and so the integration is not there however the city of laval did an excellent job with planning its growth management and its transportation planning in an integrated fashion while at the same time protecting and preserving environmental features it was also notable for its role for the elected officials they essentially led the planning process rather than it being strictly a technical exercise that planners conducted with the community another couple of examples that really struck me include the new westminster urban forest strategy and the communications guide prepared by the city of saskatoon these projects both uh, were memorable because they were doing something that was really cutting edge solving a new type of problem in this case the new westminster urban forest strategy was a great example of addressing climate change both the heat island effect and stormwater management aspect of climate change. The communications guide project from the city of Saskatoon was an early attempt for a troubled municipality to start on the road to reconciliation with the First Nations people that live within the city's boundaries. I just want to close by saying that the CIP is always looking for volunteers for committees and projects. If you think after this um, description that you might like to participate on the jury or get involved with the Canadian Institute of Planners in another way, please visit the volunteer plan volunteer page uh, on the CIP website in order to see how you can get involved with the jury or any other opportunities for volunteers. Also, if you've done some innovative planning work in your jurisdiction, have you considered submitting your project for an award? Does your project qualify as an award-winning project exemplifying excellence? Please consider submitting it for the chance to have your work recognized on the national level. Thank you.